Hello, Algebra 1 students, and welcome to problem 47 on your semester 2 final review. Um, this is one of those, maybe the last one actually, um, of problems that we didn't actually cover this year. Um, this one is a little bit beyond, I think, what you really need to know, but if a problem like this comes up on your final, you can say, ah, Mr. Grant told us we didn't need it, it's on there, sorry. Uh, so let's go through it. It is definitely doable. Um, there's only one thing we didn't cover, and I think you'll be all right with it. So what we're going to do is focus on the square root of 8x to the fourth times the square root of 6x cubed. And there are a few different ways to do this. My personal preference is that you actually go through and multiply these square roots together, because we are allowed to multiply two insides of square roots. As long as they're both in a square root, you're good to go. So I'm going to take the square root of 8 times x to the fourth times the square root of 6 times x cubed, and I'm going to write it all under one square root, 8 times x to the fourth times 6 times x cubed. And then we'll slightly rearrange here, 8 times 6 times x to the fourth times x cubed. You're always allowed to rearrange multiplication, and then we'll actually do the multiplication. 6 times 8 is 48. x to the fourth times x cubed, just a brief reminder, x to the fourth times x cubed, x to the fourth is 1, 2, 3, 4 x's, and x cubed is 1, 2, 3 of them. If we put all the multiplication between all of them, how many x's are multiplying? That's right, 7. Because when you have two of the same base, you end up adding the exponents to get x to the 7. All right, we've done everything right so far, but unfortunately, 48x to the 7th does not match either of the answers up there. Drat. Well, what do we do from here? Well, hopefully you guys are comfortable with simplifying this. We learned how to simplify in 7.4. Um, we didn't do anything with x's on the inside, but what you'll find is that the process is pretty much the same. I'm going to show you two ways to simplify. The longer way that I think more students enjoy, and then the faster way, and I'll show you how to do that too. So, the longer way here, and we're kind of going to make a couple different trees within one, and it'll be okay. Um, I'll do it in different colors here. First thing I'm going to do is break down 48. 6 times 8, I broke down 48. 6 breaks down into 3 times 2. And notice I put the times there. We need to remember that this is all about multiplication. 8 breaks down into 4 times 2, and 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. Crossing out numbers as I break them down. I'm going to do the same thing with x to the seventh, but I'm going to do it pretty efficiently. So what I mean is, when I break down x to the seventh, I'm just going to break it down into x times x times x times x times x times x times x. Seven different x's. That is the most simple way to write x to the seventh. All right. Then, to get our answer, I'll start with the green ones, we just look for pairs, right? There's a pair of twos, so that comes to the outside. There's a pair of twos that comes to the outside, and there's a plain old three that goes to the inside. I'm going to do the same thing with the x's. A pair of x's that comes to the outside, another pair, another pair, and one leftover x. The last part is putting this all together. 2 times 2 is 4. x times x times x is more commonly written as x cubed, and there's nothing to do with the inside. 3x. And so I think our answer will be 4x cubed times 3x, which looks to be b. Now, just a friendly reminder, if you are breaking down the square root of 48, and you happen to recognize that the square root of 48 has a perfect square hidden inside, for example, I know that 16 times 3 is 48, a lot of times it's faster just to rewrite it with the perfect square, and then say, oh, let's just do the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. That's 4 square roots of 3, because the square root of 16 is 4. So I went straight from here to here, from here to here, without having to do this whole tree thing. And that's just if you can recognize a perfect square. It is a faster way to do it. It's the way I imagine most teachers probably break down square roots as well. But if you're more comfortable just completely breaking down numbers and looking for pairs, that's totally fine. So hopefully this was a quick explanation of how to simplify if you have square roots with both numbers and variables underneath the radical symbol. Uh, you just break it down looking for pairs, pairs to the outside, loners on the inside. If you want to see why this works, why the pairs go to the outside and only pop up once, check that 7.4 video. All right, 
Hopefully, again, this is helping you find success for your semester two final. I wish you all the best of luck.